Council acknowledges the Wadawurrung traditional owners of this land and I pay my respects to the Elders past and present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are part of the Greater Geelong community today. This meeting is being broadcast on the internet and the recording of the meeting will be published on Council's website. Good evening everybody and thank you for tuning in. Given the circumstances where we can't have members of the community here with us in the gallery, I'm grateful that we have the technology in place that enables us to still share our meetings with you via the live stream. We have a number of important items on the agenda tonight, including our reconciliation action plan and our second community and business support package. So I hope you find the next couple of hours interesting. I also want to address media reports from the last few days about the Christmas program report, which is also on tonight's agenda. This report was requested by Council in January, when we were not yet aware of the potential impacts of the coronavirus. The officer's report that is before us tonight is simply a response to that request. It highlights possible ways to enhance the Christmas program across the entire municipality. There has been an unhelpful implication that we chose to consider this in the context of what is currently happening with staff at facilities that have been closed. A lot has certainly happened since January, when this report was commissioned to appear now, and this report was never and is not about choosing between paying the city's staff who have been impacted by service closures and the Christmas program. The city and the council are committed to supporting people affected by coronavirus, including our valued employees. And we continue to pay our staff who are no longer able to work, and we have asked the state government to provide the appropriate support as dictated and directed by the federal government. None of this has anything to do with the Christmas program, which is, on, which is an agenda item tonight that has a deadline to come before us at this time. Before we move into the agenda, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone in the Greater Geelong community for your efforts in following the restrictions in place to slow the spread of the coronavirus. The health of the community must be the number one priority, and the figures show that what we're all doing is having the desired effect. The curve is flattening and there's cautious optimism that Australia can avoid the horrific casualty tolls that we're seeing in some other countries. That said, our most heartfelt sympathy goes to those who have lost family members or friends during this pandemic. For all the economic devastation, it's the loss of human life that hurts the most and that is why now is no time for complacency. It's been tough on everyone in some way and the Easter break we've just experienced was very different to any that we've had before. I hope you found a way to enjoy it within the bounds of the social distancing measures, whether celebrating at home with your immediate family or catching up with extended family and friends online or by phone. Obviously, Easter is always a very important time of year for our local businesses and missing out on the usual holiday trade was a further devastating blow on top of the huge challenges that you're already facing. Please continue to adhere to the restrictions and the social distancing guidelines so that we don't lose the momentum that we've built. Let's stay positive, continue to look after each other as best we can and continue to help flatten and ultimately send the curve in a downwards direction. And finally, a quick mention that since our last meeting, the Local Government Act 2020 has been given royal assent, meaning the Local Government Act 1989 has now been replaced after an impressive 30-year run. For many of you, this won't mean a great deal, but for councillors, City of Greater Geelong staff and any die-hard local government enthusiasts out there, it does bring a few changes, most visibly a return to single-member wards at either the next election or by 2024. If you are keen to read the new Act, if you're a bit short of uh, reading in the social distancing period, it's available at www.localgovernment.vic.gov.au. But now, let's get on with tonight's meeting. As I've mentioned, we have a number of important matters on the agenda, and while I know the councillors will be keen to speak to every item, we do have to try to limit the time we're all in the room together. It's a maximum of two hours, so I will be asking for a strict adherence to speaking time limits by all the councillors. Now, firstly, are there any apologies to note this evening? No. And are there any requests for leave of absence from councillors tonight? No. Confirmation of the minutes. Can I please have a mover and seconder to confirm the minutes of the community focus council meeting held on the 10th of March 2020? Moved Councillor Grisbeck, seconded Councillor Sullivan. Thank you. All those in favour? Thank you. 
Are there any declarations of conflict of interest in relation to tonight's agenda? None declared, and if there are any conflicts that arise during the meeting, please make them known. Now, the meeting procedures, local law, usually allows for 45 minutes for question time. And although we don't have members of the community here in the gallery to ask questions or make submissions, we have been accepting questions online. And due to the time restrictions, um, those questions will be addressed um, with an electronic response. We've received questions from Sanya Van Hewitt, Jennifer Banto and Vicky Perrett for tonight's meeting. And each person has now already received a response via email. It's also important to note that each councillor has read every question and or submission that's been sent in. <coughs> Now, we actually had a question about the process tonight, so I will address that particular question with the following, because there was um, a question about whether we were intending to restrict conversation. So there is absolutely no intention to muzzle constituents through this process. It's absolutely about limiting the time that we're in this room together. Uh, we're all here because the local government minister has not yet been able to change the legislation and so allow remote meetings. So we, all, we are all exposed um, more than perhaps we'd like to be, uh, whether we like it or not, by having these meetings in person. The council didn't take the decision lightly when it chose to read out and uh, to not read out both the questions and the answers at the last meeting, and we do only have that limited time amount. So please note it is a challenging time for all of us. We're all having to make concessions in response to the coronavirus crisis. And as a council, we are still coming together to make important decisions for the community, and we have to take precautions in doing so. We're maintaining a distance of two metres between councillors tonight, and we are attempting to limit that time we have together so that we can keep each other safe. We will always respond to each person directly with the questions, and this council is committed to transparency. Every question that was submitted for the last meeting, together with the answer, was published in the minutes on the city's website, and that will also occur from the questions tonight. So moving into petitions, are there any petitions to be tabled? Right. Okay, so moving into the reports section, the first item on the agenda in the reports is the Reconciliation Action Plan to be moved by Councillor Mansfield and seconded Councillor Manane. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to move a minor amendment, which should be up on the screen and Councillors should have a copy of that one. Um, this is an uh, amendment that has been suggested by Councillor Aitken. I'm happy to, to put that one forward. All councillors have seen the proposed amendment. Happy to just talk to the... Uh, Councillor Manoni, happy to second the amendment? Yes. Thank you. Continue. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a really significant moment for uh, this council. This is our first ever reconciliation action plan. And I'd like to start by um, acknowledging and thanking everyone who was involved in this process, uh, particularly the Wadawurrung traditional owners and members of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community. As portfolio holder and the chair of the Karinga Aboriginal Advisory Committee, I've had the really humbling opportunity to be part of this process and can honestly say that I've learnt so much. Uh, perhaps the biggest lesson has been to keep a curious and open mind, keep asking questions. I know that I can say that officers involved, who I'd also like to thank for all their work, have learnt a lot as well. If this wrap is endorsed tonight, it marks the start of a journey for all of us in Council and more broadly in the community that we engage with. On we, and on this journey, we'll continue learning and growing. A reconciliation action plan is a formal process and document with requirements outlined ultimately approved by, uh, the, by Reconciliation Australia. There are four different types of reconciliation action plan, reflect, innovate, stretch and elevate. And they're designed to suit organisations depending on where they're at in their reconciliation journey. And we've acknowledged that we're at the very early stages, and so we've developed um, the, the, the initial plan, a reflect plan. If it's endorsed tonight, it'll go to Reconciliation Australia for approval. And this is a 12 to 18 month plan that identifies actions we can take to better prepare the City of Greater Geelong for reconciliation activities. And it's therefore quite, quite inwardly focused. It's about looking at where we're at, all of the good aspects of what we do, but also uh, where we're not doing so well. It's about engaging staff throughout the organisation and building an organisation-wide commitment to reconciliation. It's about creating a more culturally safe workplace. And it's about creating an organisation that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of our community can trust. This hasn't been an easy process. 
uh, and I can tell you that having been there uh, throughout the process over the last year. But I think the difficulties along the way actually demonstrate why a reconciliation action plan for the City of Greater Geelong is needed. Last year, several councillors and officers took up an opportunity to go on a cultural and historical walk with Karina Eccles, a proud uh, Wadawurrung woman and traditional owner. And the value of this in deepening our appreciation for the long, proud, beautiful, sometimes traumatic history of this region and, and the diversity and complexity of uh, the First Nations people in our community uh, who live on the Wadawurrung lands today uh, can't be underestimated. I'd like to thank Councillor Aitken for uh, asking uh, that the uh, motion endorsed at the last meeting regarding a new arm of the grants program uh, with respect to First Nations heritage be included as an action in the Reconciliation Action Plan. Um, I'll acknowledge that while uh, Councillor Aitken has consulted with traditional owners himself regarding this, and I uh, sincerely commend him on this initiative, as portfolio holder, uh, I am mindful that there hasn't been consultation with the RAP Working Party on, or the Karinga Aboriginal Advisory Committee about uh, this particular amendment. And while I believe the amendment is in keeping with the spirit uh, of the RAP, and it's certainly reasonable to include it as an action, I think it's important that going forward we don't inadvertently undermine this whole process uh, by failing to undertake consultation and going through the, the appropriate forums where we can. Um, I guess one of the other things that I've learned is that you don't know what you don't know. And this is why, despite good intentions, organisations can develop culturally unsafe workplaces. Cultural awareness and education are key actions uh, to come out of this Reconciliation Action Plan. And if nothing else uh, were to be done, improved knowledge and understanding of our region's specific history amongst staff and councillors would be a major step forward. And I'd like to um, finish by saying I challenge all staff and councillors to participate in any future opportunities for cultural uh, uh, education and development um, to further their own, own knowledge um, and, and something that I'll, I'll be taking up opportunities to do uh, as they arise. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Councillor Manane. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you to Councillor Mansfield for your excellent work in, in this uh, matter. I, I, I know that you've uh, really put some time and effort into making sure this is a quality uh, wrap, and I'm certain that your contribution in no small way has led to the quality of the document, and so I'm very pleased to second your motion. Having said that, the document does place some responsibilities upon us, um, not least of all, uh, committing ourselves uh, as a council group for the betterment of the traditional owners. Um, and uh, so w w it needs not to just be rhetoric. It, we need to actually make sure we carry through with those responsibilities. Um, and, and I think um, if we reflect on the statistical um, reports that we, uh, that we get across the nation and, and, in fact, in our own backyard, when we look at issues like unemployment, health outcomes and life expectations, here in Geelong it's no better than in, in other parts around the world and indeed around Australia for our own First Nations people. Um, so there's a lot to be achieved in the years ahead and it's great to see the determination by our council and, and, I, and I would hope councils after us to achieve as much as they can. Um, as a general principle, I think we should be aiming for generational change in that the level of expectation of the traditional owners uh, in the future should be greater than it is today based on the actions, the words and actions of this RAP and the words and actions of our council in, in, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Manane. Any other comments? Councillor Aitken. Um, thank you very much, um, Mayor Asher. And um, look, thank you to Councillor Mansfield for including the recommendation um, and making the amendment. Look, I, I just wanted to um, express my personal story about this. I'm actually quite passionate about our relationships with our First People and our Indigenous community and our Aboriginals. And um, that wasn't born from going to university and studying about this issue. It wasn't born from reading about it in a paper. It was actually by being raised in the northern suburbs of um, Geelong. And in the northern suburbs, we had the highest population of Indigenous um, community in um, the Geelong region. And I actually saw with my own eyes the prejudice, the injustice, the discrimination and the disadvantage that was experienced by um, our original community. 
And um, we do have a responsibility to have reconciliation with um, our First People, and certainly we do in Geelong. Personally, I would have liked this document to be more meaningful. Um, I, I, um, I understand the process that um, we've gone through, and it's encouraging that this is the first time that the City of Greater Geelong has ever had a reconciliation action plan. But for me, um, uh, I, I really would have liked some um, significant more actions and meaningfulness in this particular um, document. Um, and some of those examples um, are that I would have loved to have actually seen a dedicated Koori unit in council. Um, and that um, Koori unit actually would have then advocated for employment opportunities and support um, Aboriginal people in Geelong to actually get employment um, in, within the city and also try to address some of the cultural awareness that's needed within an organisation that actually employs 2,700 people. I would have loved the opportunity to be able to have some clear actions and understanding about supporting local um, reconciliation in the Geelong community, but um, we don't um, have that capacity to be able to do that in what's presented. I also would have loved um, to be able to have a process to deal with the scars that exist in the Geelong community from the settlement of Europeans in our, um, so in our location over 200 years ago. We do have significant place names that are scars on our community. And um, I was actually hoping that there would be an, a mechanism in this particular document to try to deal with some of those scars. And the most evident example of that that I can give is Bellpost Hill. Bellpost Hill is a scar on our relationship with our Indigenous community and should have been addressed. I also believe that we should have looked at um, a Ballarat-type survival day support ceremony in the community. And I also believe that City Hall should have followed what's occurring up at Parliament House in um, Melbourne. And that is a room is being dedicated permanently for our Indigenous people. And I think there's a great opportunity to do that in Geelong now. I don't believe none of those actions can't occur without the RAP. But what I do know is that I wish that they were actually mentioned in this particular document. I understand the process. I'm probably just an impatient, passionate person about supporting our Indigenous people, and that's what I would have liked to have seen in this particular document. Thank you, Councillor Aitken. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mayor Asher. Uh, I, too, have the privilege of uh, having early experience with Aboriginal people, and Pastor Doug Nichols was a regular visitor to my home. He became the first Aboriginal governor of South Australia. And we did learn a lot, I did learn a lot as a child from him uh, about uh, through the Aboriginal Advancement League. But as far as the RAP framework's concerned, um, it, it is set by, by Reconciliation Australia, and I'm very pleased that we're working in close consultation with them. And uh, in terms of, I thank uh, Count Councillor Mansfield for, for doing all the work that she has done. And I do understand that uh, the, first, uh, the first stage of our wrap is to reflect. And an element of this, uh, this, this reflect is the respect and uh, uh, relationships. And I'd like to pay my respect to Norm Eccles and, and uh, Karina Eccles. And Karina especially, I think, is a wonderful communicator. And I'd like to quote from her statement in our rap. And this is it. Our creation story and song lines are all connected. Country is a living entity. We can close our eyes and hear our language from our country being spoken by our birds and all the things around us. We can open our eyes and see our stories and connection. We can walk barefoot, barefoot and feel our Mother Earth. We can traditionally burn country for it to heal and to re-nourish. Our cultural structures cared for our country for thousands of years. We, as Wadawurrung people, will continue to advocate, care and walk together for our future generations and all people living and visiting our country, Wadawurrung country. We praise the City of Greater Geelong for walking alongside us and listening to our voices and traditional ways. And I thank Karina for that. Indeed, I do note that uh, we have 16 primary actions 
Two of them, one is to create a physical environment and I think we're going to be working on that. I do expect that the civic accommodation, the work done on this building and around the municipality will take care of that. And indeed we need to improve employment outcomes. And I do note that uh, uh, Geelong has got the largest Aboriginal population in Victoria. It's about 1% of, of, the, of the population. And I'm sad to note that we only have about 0.4% Aboriginal representation on the staff of this city. Councillor Mason. Any other comments? Councillor Murray. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, Councillor Jim and myself must have been thinking along the same path because I too read something from uh, Karina Eccles that stuck home to me, Jim, and uh, I want, wanted to uh, read that. And that is, we praise the city of Greater Geelong for walking alongside us and listening to our voices and traditional ways. The development of the Reconciliation Action Plan has been a journey of walking together to see the Reconciliation Action Plan endorsed as a framework of accountability to acknowledge, support and advocate for Wadarong people and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait peoples living on Wadarong country." Unquote. These words to me are a great representation of what needs to be achieved uh, through this by this council. Thank you. Councillor Murray. Councillor Grisbeck. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thanks to Councillor Mansfield for all the work over the past two and a half years working um, you know, with, with the group and the committee and it's not been necessarily an easy um, task. There has been some challenges along the way and I think that's the this wrap is finally something that we can start the process and I think um, we're, we're lucky to have um, some good relationships. They're getting better with our Indigenous community and traditional owners. Um, this is just the start of the way that we will work with, uh, together with hand in hand with our First Nations people and um, thank you to the committee, the Karinga Committee, for their time and effort um, put in. Through, we, I think that we're in a reflect phase and I think that's really important. Um, the traditional owner message from Norm, as has been mentioned before, Norm Eccles, Karina and um, Billy, is really powerful. Um, my message now is that actions speak louder than words and we need to see the actions in all parts of our business. Um, I think that, that, that this wrap has been done in, in consultation. It's not just a council document. This is a collaboration to ensure that we reflect, we respect and we reconciliate. So um, I'm really... Um, passionate as well um, and I think that this is now done in, in conjunction and collaboration. We need to work hand in hand. This is not something that we can just go off and do our own thing. I think this needs to make sure that we're, we go through the right phases. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud to say that we're the council that is um, endorsing the very, very first wrap um, and I think we, it's a line in the sand now that, um, to show that we actually do respect our traditional owners and want to work hand in hand with them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Grisbeck. Well said. Any other comments? Okay, Councillor Mansfield to close. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you to my fellow councillors for all of your comments. Um, I think it's, it's great to see um, the interest and, um, and um, support for this document. Um, I'd like to say that um, while I, I've been uh, involved in this process, mm. I, I have very much... Um, uh, I, I, would, I wouldn't like to think that I've, I've driven this. It's been very much uh, something that the Rec um, Reconciliation Action Plan Working Party has driven. A lot of the actions have come out of that group and the members of that group. And, and like I mentioned before, I think it's really important that we, you know, we do our best to bolster those existing advisory groups and, and that action, um, uh, that working group um, going forward and make sure that we get, we're consulting and getting input from the community. Um, I think uh, Councillor Aitken suggested a whole a range of wonderful actions and I'd encourage you to get more involved in the process going forward. Um, we'll have opportunities to, to continue to put, um, to develop actions and develop new iterations of um, the, the Reconciliation Action Plan. I know that there's a desire to see a lot stronger and bolder actions. I think part of it was making sure we had things that were 
very much achievable um, on, on that list um, of actions coming out of the out of this initial document. Um, but look, it's a good start. Um, like any plan, as has been mentioned, it's not worth the paper it's written on unless it leads to meaningful actions. One of the questions we did ask in one of our working group meetings was who does who's done their action plan well and what can we learn from them? And that's one of the things we're going away to try and find out because there are many organisations that have these, not many of them do it do it really well. Um, so you know the challenge going forward is is implementation, um, and maybe with the current you know difficult times we're in with COVID, it's an opportunity for us as an organisation to take stock, um, really engage with the RAP as councillors. We need to support and prioritise implementation of this with our budget decisions, and the ultimate feedback um, or the ultimate um, test will be the feedback we get from traditional owners and, and um, members of our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community. Um, their ongoing engagement will will. Um, demonstrate whether we're doing this well, and I really hope that um, they'll continue to walk with us and educate us on the journey forward. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Quite an exciting moment for City of Greater Geelong. So, on that note, uh, all those in favour of the recommendation? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Item two, another exciting moment. The Councillor Aitken. Move the motion um, and also add um, to it point nine point ten. Community support packages. Okay, have we got seconding Councillor Grisbeck? Happy to second the amendment? Yep. yep. Great. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Aitken. Thank you um, very much, um, Mayor Asha. Look, this is actually the most um, significant. Uh, it's a shame that um, the Reconciliation Action Plan has to actually share the stage with this document because this is actually the most significant thing that Council is actually doing tonight. And this is actually in the um, announcement of stage two of our um, community and economic support packages that we're actually undertaking. Um, the package um, has a value of about $1.6 million. We've already committed um, $3.4 million. So after tonight, we're actually making a $5 million commitment to this stage of um, um, supports to the Geelong community and um, there's more to come. There's significantly more to come and um, the pain that um, the, the community is going to, and the businesses are going to um, feel in the next um, few weeks and few months, Council does need to be able to respond and assist to them as much as they can. Some of the highlights some um, in terms of the support packages that we're putting forward tonight are we have a new and reformed financial hardship um, policy and that policy tonight actually announces um, deferral of fees, rates and charges. Um, it talks about the capacity to be able to enter into payment arrangements. It also significantly um, freezes um, any interest um, penalty on overdue rates dated from the 14th of March until the 31st of October 2020. It also, tonight, we're announcing a debt recovery freeze as well too, so Council will not formally commence any debt recovery after tonight's decision from the 14th of March until the 31st of October. And um, there are a number of other um, recommendations that have been brought before Council as well too. We are actually also um, making a contribution to food relief of 50,000 and also seeking an advocacy role with the state government for 100,000. We are also um, setting up a fast track of a business case to actually try to establish um, some social housing units in Geelong and making a $100,000 contribution to that and work in partnership with the Department of Health Human Services um, to actually try to achieve that aim. We are looking at trying to uh, putting $80,000 aside to establish a small business training program. We are also setting um, up $30,000 to actually um, create a targeted support to um, create um, uh, online um, and digitise some of our heritage and arts and cultural programs that are now affected um, and are closed at the present time. Importantly, a very small initiative but is welcomed by the broader community is that we are actually doing something with our arts and cultural community. In all the packages that I have actually seen from both our state and federal colleagues, I have seen nothing from um, um, specifically targeted towards our arts and cultural community. The City of Greater Geelong tonight is announcing that we are introducing a um, new committee which will actually be the 
COVID-19 Arts and Cultural Advisory Committee, and we're allocating $20,000 tonight to assist that community to try to develop local supports that actually can assist our local arts and cultural sector in Geelong that's affected by the COVID-19 crisis. Um, there are numerous other um, opportunities being presented tonight and allow other councillors to speak of them. But one further issue that I wish to refer to is that, as I said, these packages are not done. This is stage two. Um, the point um, 9.10 is for councillors to consider some additional programs um, and consider those programs. We do have a need to be able to have a look at um, waiving rates um, in the CBD and other parts of Geelong. And we do need to also consider the central marketing levy that is now being um, produced um, uh, as a burden and seen by a burden as many um, business ratepayers and commercial ratepayers in the city of Geelong. And Councillor Contell will be pleased that um, we do need to consider that as part of a recovery package, we, we um, put forward the proposition for consideration of um, continuation of street free street parking after the, um, the 30th of June. What we're actually doing, we're not committing to any of those packages tonight. What we're doing is we're setting out um, a program of how we actually address those. Um, two of those are suggested to come back before Council on the 24th of April for consideration and also officer recommendation. And officers may re reject um, the proposition to actually have um, businesses that had been forced operationally to close to not have their weights raved. Uh, the officers may actually decide that in their recommendation. And it's also the same as the Central Geelong Marketing Levy. It may be decided not to waive um, rates in that particular area as well too. The recommendation can come before council uh, from the officers on those particular ones as well too. And I'll allow others um, to have the opportunity to speak on what is our most significant item before council tonight. Thank you, Councillor Aitken. Councillor Grisbeck. I'll reserve my right, please, Madam Mayor. Okay, who'd like to speak next? Councillor Cantell. been receiving uh, feedback from uh, community members uh, and certainly uh, myself personally uh, even up until uh, half an hour before coming to this meeting uh, I was receiving feedback from uh, business operators uh, here in Geelong. Um, uh, most uh, most uh, significant have been those obviously that have been uh, forced to uh, close uh, due to government restrictions. Um, many within the hospitality uh, industry, also in the, in the health and fitness. And, and these are businesses that um, cannot open their doors and cannot trade, cannot have a, a front window to serve from. Uh, they're not structured in, in that manner uh, and aren't able to actually generate any, any revenues. And, and as such, uh, at the moment, it's, it's all out of pocket, the, uh, the jobs uh, keeper program hasn't yet uh, been established to the point where they've started to receive funds. And so I do thank uh, Councillor Aitken for uh, including 9.10 because uh, all of those three uh, points um, uh, I have uh, shared uh, with my fellow councillors that are very, very important to the community, uh, particularly 9.10.2 and 9.10.3. And so I will welcome uh, those uh, issues to come back. I would have loved to have, have dealt with them tonight, but understand that we're working with uh, time constraints, uh, but that there is an intent to uh, bring further initiatives forward, perhaps even in the next council meeting or certainly before the end of this financial year. Uh, really pleased with the suggestions that the community have been giving us, and as a result of that, 9.5 is a direct uh, input as a result of feedback that we've received from contractors and business owners out there, which is uh, asking us, could we please bring forward and, and tighten up the time frame that we have to pay 
our suppliers. And I um, applaud uh, Martin, uh, our CEO, and the team uh, for thinking outside the box, redeploying employees into this area uh, to be able to help uh, those subcontractors that, are, subcontractors that are out there and suppliers to, to council so that they can get their payments uh, earlier. Also, the, uh, the extension of the refund of the food and health premises registration fee, I think that'll be uh, well received also, uh, valued about uh, $1.18 million. So I'll leave it at that because I'm sure there's others that want to talk to it, but I do appreciate the opportunity to work with the finance portfolio holder and, and the deputy uh, on, this, on this program. Thank you, Councillor Contell. We need to correct. Mayor, just that the date is 24th, it should say the 28th. The 8th of April, <coughs> being the next meeting date. Thank you to our Director of Planning, who's just texted me that information. <laughs> Thank you. I think we corrected it on most things. Anyone else want to comment at this point? Councillor Murray. Um, it's more of some questions. This, this, is, this has come to us on the run. And um, so uh, there were some questions posed this afternoon that I didn't get any answers to. So. I'll make a comment, and if uh, someone can answer them for me whilst we're, we're here, that'd be great. And uh, I'll start with 9.8.2, and that's the, uh, the, the hospital parking, employees' free parking permits. Now, I, and I, I imagine other councillors here today would have been um, contacted in relation to parking in Myers Street. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe there should be uh, an exclusion, perhaps in 9.8.2, to, to exclude Myers Street from, these, from this parking. So I'm getting an indication from another <laughs> council that... that uh, Would you like an answer? answer to that, Councillor Murray, if you like. Yep. Um, the, the people that have rode into us today are actually um, on the other side of Myers Street. It's between, between Swanson mm -hmm. and Maroubal. And those areas um, that these people are talking about are not affected, and they've said thank you very much for the information, and they're happy to continue to support what's what's in here. Right. I've spoken to them this after, late it's, this afternoon. We've had a few questions today. Yeah. That was yeah. good because I mean they pick up the Geelong Advertiser and read that Myers Street yeah. is going to be included in um, in this, and of course, all right. Well, that's. I didn't get the full detail unfortunately in the paper, so the full detail has been provided to them by email, and they were very happy. So. All right. Thank well, you. I'll continue on. An and, yes, continue. Uh, I, I just wanted to, um, to, to make note of uh, 9.10.3, which is the Central Geelong Marketing Levy, um, which I am the chair of that committee. And um, my uh, questions in relation to this is that uh, if we waive the levy, what then happens to the committee and the work that they do? Or is it, in, in, is it supposed that the council then put pick up that levy for the three months, from the 1st of April to the 30th of June. Um, so there's, there's, it doesn't indicate, it just says suspend. Is it suspend? It's it's coming back. Yeah, but, but, but what happens in those three months to the Central Geelong Marketing Committee? We debate it. Read that way, Eddie. I can answer that question. It's actually that going to be a report that come, comes back. It's going to be a report that comes back to Council. So those type of questions will actually be considered in, um, in the report, which is why it's actually proposed to actually come back on the 24th of April. The yes. intention isn't to debate the issue tonight um, in terms of the actual package. Yep. Yeah. To note that it will come back. Uh, yeah, right, OK. Well, but, uh, I mean, we have staff involved in this area, so are they going to feel comfortable in the next couple of weeks about their position, you know, for those three months from the 1st of April to the 30th of June? I pose that question. There's much said about staff, and uh, we certainly don't want to go down the path again with other staff involved in, in that central Geelong. An answer tonight would be great in relation to what... I mean, if that's, if that's what's proposed, that the council pick up the tab for that three months, we should know tonight, not come back with a report on the uh, 28th of April. I can tell you that the, 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 uh, the levy, the it's 1.2 million for the year. We're talking about three months, so we're talking about $300,000. It's coming on the 28th. Yeah, it's a notification that it will be developed for briefing and then we debate it at the 28th of April meeting. So there's not a decision on that particular item tonight. That's a decision to consider that item at 
the next meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Murray. Councillor Mansfield. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I think the discussion that's just um, taken place really highlights the challenging environment we're working in at the moment. We're trying to make decisions um, in a rapidly changing um, landscape, but I think it's really, really important, probably more than ever when we're in circumstances like this, that we remember um, principles of accountability, transparency, um, good governance, uh, and that although there is a lot of pressure on us to make decisions quickly and respond very quickly to this challenge, and quite rightly, we should be responding quickly. Um, at the same time, we do need to ensure as much as possible that we follow good process. I'm more comfortable with this amendment that's been put up within some previous discussions in that it's just about bringing back some more reports about specific issues. Um, I think this is certainly these community support packages are a work in progress. I'm heartened to see that there is a bit more focus in this one, um, be, not to discount the importance of supporting business, but also on vulnerable members of our community um, uh, by focusing on food relief and social housing. It is, as always, when there are um, you know, various catastrophes and perhaps there's been nothing, nothing more significant than COVID-19 that... Um, you know, has really happened in probably any of our, our lifetimes to our communities, um, those who are um, most vulnerable um, experience the, the greatest degree of difficulty. Again, their, their difficulties are compounded in these sort of situations. So it's really important that we, um, I think, continue to focus on what we can do to support um, particularly those uh, who are most vulnerable and who are suffering the most significant hardship as a result of COVID um, going forward. Um, so I look forward to ongoing work in developing further community packages. I'm happy about the, the current package we've got here, um, but we really do need to look at targeting relief to those people who most need it in our community and supporting the most vulnerable, um, rather than blanket, um, uh, uh, blanket policies that may or may not be reaching those who, who are most in need. So I think going forward, we really need to look at how we support the most vulnerable. Councillor Mansfield. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mayor Asher. I too am uh, very much enthusiastically uh, endorse this um, recommendation. Um, up until, um, what's the paragraph number? 9.9. .9. And I think that I really feel uncomfortable that we've been under high pressure this last weekend to consider uh, various options. And today, at the, at the end of the day, we received a uh, recommendation from the CEO which excluded this 9.10. And we've received this at the last minute. Now, I understand if I have the full assurances that these, these three, 9.10.1 to 9.10.3, are to be reviewed are to be subject to various reports, fine with me. But I do understand that today, officers have been considering these, um, these paragraphs, or paragraphs similar to these, and have not endorsed them. So, fine, let's go ahead and, and think about it all again. But I do express that, dis that discomfort, and I am mindful that we, are, we do need to continue to be agile and to consider the most vulnerable people. And I note that in the news today, uh, we've, re we've uh, achieved now greater than 10% unemployment. And uh, we will be uh, uh, experiencing some other unexpected events, I suppose, from that. And in regard to the COG possible redundancies, I do applaud the work done by the People and Culture Department in collaboration with the four union delegates and, and the Welfare Officer Program. And so that's another element of the unemployment that we, we will have to be considering in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Manane. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to say that I very much endorse the, uh, the original motion. I think it's a fantastic package and I compliment my fellow councillors on the work they've done and, and also the officers. I, I just do not understand why we've got this amendment. Um, you know, we, we decided on our package last Tuesday and it's, it, 
uh, and now we've got um, some more options here. And we're not talking about what we've decided on, we're talking about what we haven't decided on. It's not funded, we don't know what it's going to cost. We're asked to vote on something we're not, we don't even know the, the cost of. Um, and, you know, really, we're starting to stray into area to areas of poor governance and financial responsibility here when we start voting on things that we don't know. Firstly, we haven't been briefed thoroughly on, we don't know the cost of, we don't know the implications of, we don't know the, the, the impact on the community of what we're putting out there because we haven't discussed it and we don't know what are the possible implications. We don't know the implications on our staff with things, things that we haven't discussed and funded. We're just putting it out there. Surely we can actually deal with these matters in a professional manner and put it out there in two weeks' time. I really, really do feel for our staff. I mean, if we've got all this extra money that we're willing just to, to, to say that we're going to do these things without, without, report, without appropriate reports and without appropriate discussion and process, that they have every right to be asking us why aren't we spending the $4 million or $6 million or whatever it is on them. Um, they must be saying, for example, the first one, the on-street parking, they must be saying we must have compelling reports to be recommending we spend $4 million on off-street parking. Well, actually, actually, we've got a report that tells us not to do it. They must be saying well, we must have a report that says that off-street parking for the next six months is going to be critical to the success of our businesses. We don't have such a report. They must, have a, they must be thinking we've got a report that council officers are forcing us into making this sort of a recommendation. They're not. They're, they're advising us against us. So I, I just really feel for our staff when they should be saying to us, why are we not, why are we not spending money on us and our families and our need rather than going through this? Through, we, actually have, we actually have reports on the first one. We need reports on the other two. I really do think in the best interest of good financial management, good governance, good process, we should be saying, let's have a look at these things over the next two or three weeks and come back. And let's present ourselves in the, in, in the public light as being professional, being having good processes and, and having really, really good, con uh, real have good concern about both our staff and our community before we make rushed decisions. This has just been put in at the 11th hour um, and really, it's, it probably shouldn't be there. In fact, it shouldn't be there. And, and I'd like us not to go ahead with the amendment, but I would like to strongly support the original uh, proposal. Thank you. Councillor Manane. Councillor Howard. Mayor Asher. Um, I, I share... Um, I, first of all, I um, thank the CEO and his staff and for their community support package that has been presented, um, albeit under duress and uh, with severe time constraints. Um, to receive the 9.10 uh, uh, additions um, quite late, I'm so very, very late, it makes it really difficult to put your head around them clearly and understand what is already a complex uh, scenario that we're all faced with. And you want to have like, clarity when you're working through this type of scenario because we are being watched like we've ever, never been watched before. Every single day we're being um, commented on about um, how we're handling this particular <coughs> Uh, situation and what we're doing about it and what we should be doing and shouldn't be doing and everyone's an expert at this point in time on how we should be addressing it and here we are looking at a really um, potentially um, substantial amount of money um, which, which that's fine but I'm not too sure that two weeks is enough for us to put our head around it and be really confident at the end that we've got it right. Um, I even think for the officers to do this in two weeks is going to be a huge ask on top of what already um, is difficult times for them. I have no doubt there are officers in this organisation who are currently working who feel very, very lucky and uh, feel for their fellow colleagues who aren't able to work. Um, and I'm sure that they are working um, overtime as much as they can and as hard as they can to, uh, to justify um, their position. I'm just not comfortable with the, the way this has come through. I'm happy for the debate to take place, but I'm not happy to be rushed in a two-week period. Um, and I'd also just like to make comment in relation to, as we work through what will be an ongoing discussion of a community support package, this is stage two, there could be stage three, stage four, I, I don't know. But I'd like to think that we can um, get back on a, on a, on a good dialogue 
um, with our state and federal members. I think that's important. Um, uh, I'm not overly concerned with some of the media commentary. That, that's by the by. I'd, I'd just like to think that we can um, get on the front foot again and perhaps get them in, uh, in the room uh, well, when it's appropriate. I, I, I get the situation we're in with being in the room. But to a point where we can have, whether it's through Zoom or whatever it might be, how we can communicate about how we're feeling, how they're feeling, how we need their support. Uh, financially, we need the support of the state government. We need the support of the federal government um, if we're going to have uh, you know, stronger impacts into the community. I just make those comments. Um, again, I think we're on the right path, but I don't think it's... it's I'm not comfortable with when, when we're rushed in such a manner. I'm happy for the discussions to take place and happy to see where they fall, but I just think the time frame is, is just not reasonable for us as councillors to be really confident at the end we're making a decision. And I don't think it's fair on the staff to also be able to bring a really considered and accurate document back to us. Thank you. Councillor Howard. So Nelson. Madam Mayor, yeah, as everyone knows in this room, I don't like getting, getting things late um, and don't like being rushed, but uh, we're in, a, we're in a, a state now where things need to be made and we need to review them as quickly as we can and, and get on with it. Um, this doesn't commit us to anything in particular other than to get a report in. It doesn't commit us to spending any money until we get that report back on the 28th of April. And then again in June, it says June, but it's June. Um, for 9.10.2. Uh, anyway, that's by the by. Um, but as Councillor Harwood rightly said, this is um, uh, Council's COVID-19-1. There's going to be dash 2, dash 3 and dash 4 definitely. Um, and this is a start to see where we are and, um, and try and help those businesses in the CBD. Uh, if the report comes back that says don't help them, well then we'll make a decision then. But I think we need to, um, to see if they're hurting because uh, the phone calls and emails I'm receiving saying they are, they are hurting. So um, I think we need to do something and, and we'll see how much that costs. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Councillor Sullivan. Madam Mayor, I'll just be brief as we have limited time, but I would like to voice my support for what we have before us here. This is a fantastic package. It covers business rates, the health sector, heritage, arts and culture, social housing, food relief. Uh, we've got a few add-ons here, which... As many have said, I'm very much happy to consider and gain more information on, but I'm happy to support the recommendation this evening. I think it's a great step forward. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. You've spoken, you've spoken. If you, like. you probably would like to, I'm sure. Um, I might just have a, a couple of words. Look, the, the word unprecedented has become a little bit trite um, during this COVID response, but there's nothing um, about hardship that's new. And it's very real and it's very immediate for a lot of people in our community. You only need to look at social media, the mainstream media and our email inboxes to see some really uh, quite confronting examples of the brutal reality for so many businesses, so many workers in our region. And the CEO and executive team have to be commended for the massive amount of work that they continue to do to help those people in need. Absolutely the vulnerable people in our community are the focus. Um, we know it's a game of catch up that we're playing. Um, but we can't ignore or underestimate the amount of work that's gone into developing these packages, this Mark II of yeah, quite, quite a few, I'm sure, as well as the efforts of um, our executive team and CEO to find ways um, that we can support people in continuing to work and businesses continuing to survive the crisis. Many of the initiatives are being developed at warp speed, we know that. Um, yes, governance is always critical, the situation is changing rapidly. So I specifically wanted to thank the CEO um, for finding ways to support our residents, ratepayers and businesses and to respond to councillor requests as well because we hear it directly from our community members uh, every day. I'd also like to pay tribute to my colleagues as well for their ideas and for the non-stop, and it is non-stop, the texts and emails arrive at all hours of the day and night, um, and your insights and suggestions and refinements are, are greatly appreciated. I'd also like to acknowledge the federal and state governments for their support that they've provided so far to vulnerable people. It's a genuine team effort across all three levels of government and I urge all levels of government to keep it up, keep up the good work. We are working very hard to have that dialogue with the state government in particular and we look forward to positive next steps and results for our staff. Councillor Grisbeck. Ah, thank you. 
I think I just wanted to um, be clear on a couple of things. I think we've received the original recommendation late this afternoon from the CEO. So to say that the amendments were received late, that is correct. Um, but we only had a couple of hours to assess what was being put before us. Um, 9.10 is asking the Council for a report and recommendation from the CEO on those extra topics that I think some of the councillors quite, felt quite passionate about. Um, just because the officers haven't put them in this amendment doesn't mean they aren't a good idea. Um, with respect to everyone around timeframes, look, we are working under extreme distress, as are everyone, and we just need to be kind to one another. Councillors clearly have a passion for ensuring that the community is given every opportunity to get their life back on track post-COVID-19, ensuring they're supported whilst going through this unprecedented time. I've used that word, Mayor, unprecedented, and doing everything we can ensure that, to ensure our employees are supported. We, I think the community, are all in this together, and now is not really the time for political games. We want to make sure that we leave no one behind. Um, as Councillor Mansfield alluded to before, we as a community are only as good as how we treat our most vulnerable people. And as a council, there are many things that we, should be, that we are supporting that are not necessarily within our remit as council, but we see a direct need. Um, we should be trying to help where we can. And in my view, our employees are the most important asset that we have at the city. And I'd encourage the CEO and executive to do everything within their power to keep them in employment. I'm really pleased to see the work going on behind the scenes to ensure that the employees get the opportunity to be redeployed. Um, thanks to the HR team and to those at the ASU that we're working really, really hard with, um, thanks for helping us focus on what's important right now. Um, thank you to my fellow councillors for being here um, to make sure that this um, community support package has got um, support that it needs. Councillor Grisbeck. Councillor Aitken, to close. Um, thank you very much, Mayor Asher. Look, I'm, I'm actually a bit confused by the debate that's actually occurred tonight because leaders are actually making daily decisions at the moment. Leaders are actually making weekly decisions at the moment. It was only three weeks ago that the state of emergency was actually announced in um, Victoria by our Premier associated with COVID-19. And in the last three weeks, this is our second support package that's actually coming before us. I'm flabbergasted because we actually should be talking about what we're actually voting on tonight and supporting the community with. We are actually showing leadership to our community and responding to them about the packages that we're actually putting before them. This is the most detailed document that's actually been presented to Council for months in terms of response financially to um, the COVID-19 crisis. This is the most hideous event that has actually infected pain on the world um, at an extent that we've never actually experienced before in our lives. And we have been asked by our community, both our business community and by our, commu our um, local residential community to actually show some leadership and how we can actually assist them with some hardship and some clear actions and responses to them to help them survive during this incredible period of time. And certainly that's what should, the focus should be on tonight. It should be on the packages that we're actually putting forward and we have and our officers have actually worked extremely hard for them. They have worked extremely hard over the last three weeks to ensure that we actually have um, material presented before us and this is the second support package that's being presented for us. On the 24th of, uh, 28th of April it will be the third support package that is presented before us and we will probably have other support packages that will come before us because we don't know what's actually happening over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of months. We have to be leaders on this issue, not sit back and pretend that um, we're going to follow some process and attack some process. Our officers have shown us leadership on this issue. I want to congratulate the councillors that have shown us leadership on this issue, in particular Councillor Contel. He is the only one at, as the chair of the portfolio for finance that I've received at least two emails every second day to actually consider recommendations to be put for council tonight. The challenge that should be, all councillors should be doing that and putting forward ideas and be leaders on this particular issue. Thank you, Councillor Aitken. On that note, I will put the alternate recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Item three, our heritage, our collection. Moved Councillor Mason, seconded Councillor Sullivan. Thank you, Mayor Asher. 
We treasure Geelong's culture and heritage and we will help our creative community recover and flourish again. As we've just heard, we've discussed emergency support in a wide, in a wide range of sectors and we all do passionately support them. But we're also planning for best early recovery. This plan, our heritage, our collection, will be shovel ready. Madam Mayor, we have a vast and valuable collection. We are the proud owners of over 1,200 movable heritage objects, artworks and artefacts to the estimated value of $28 million. These have to be shared with current and future generations to further enrich our sense of community and culture. Such a large collection has to be properly cared for. This report shows that we have a lot of work to do. We have to be careful not to damage the wonderful collection through neglect and insufficient management resources. And there are many more objects outside this collection within the community. We need to acquire the best of these to properly represent the diversity and depth of our history, heritage and ever-deepening culture. Madam Mayor, more attention needs especially to be given to our First Nations people and to the diversity of our multicultural communities. Both are pillars of our heritage. Indeed, this strategic report is backed up by substantial community consultation internal and external workshops and stakeholder feedback. All of these have informed the development of policy and recommendations on the use and management of this collection. As Chair of the Heritage Advisory Committee, I'm pleased to announce that on the 27th of February this year, this report was tabled and it received unanimous support. Madam Mayor, one size does not fit all and there are complex management strategies which must be adopted and considered in the light of budget constraints and opportunities. Now we have currently six major sub-collections. There, ma there are management challenges for each and we require additional staff to fully care for the collection. First we have the National Wool Museum with 7,800 objects. We have a fabric sample from MacArthur's first wool clip. We have a sample of the million dollar bale. We have Australia's largest collection of wool presses and the most significant public collection of Wagga quilts in the country. But there are challenges. We require additional storage with high quality environmental controls and we lament current off-site storage is not fit for purpose and does not meet museum standards. Then there is a Geelong Maritime Museum with 2,400 objects. Here we have salvage item, luggage, naval uniforms, navigational equipment, shipwrights and sailmakers tools, ship fixtures and equipment, rocket rescue ap apparatus, deep sea diving equipment, rope working displays, model ships, charts, plans and photographs. And other channel challenges here are also such as completing conservation processes and improving governance, curation and storage. And then we proudly have the Geelong Heritage Centre with over 1,000 items. It, it's, it tells um, the municipal story of, of uh, the city of Greater Geelong and its former municipalities. There's an early book by John Raddenberry on the Geelong Botanical Gardens, ferns and lycopods. And we have a brass gorgette presented to Wadawarung man Dan Dan Nook as Geelong's best runner in 1860. And so we have other collections, too numerous to mention now, um, some of which are the Council Art, Art and Artefacts Collection with 510 items and the old Geelong Jail with 218 objects. And the report recognises the value of the more than 20 community volunteer groups and their collections, which are not part of the city's collection and make very significant contribution to our cultural heritage. Madam Mayor, special mention is also made in this report of the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Heritage Protection Act, the State Aboriginal Heritage Act and the Karinga Aboriginal Action Plan. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Well said. Councillor Sullivan. Madam Mayor, I uh, 
So I will endorse the words of Councillor Mason, who, just, who has described this report and its findings in great detail. As the original mover of this draft report last year, I'm delighted by the multiple submissions we have received, which included congratulations and also highlighted the importance of this document. I would also like to thank Councillor Mason and the Heritage Advisory Committee for the efforts they put into this document as well, and I'm happy to second it. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Any other comments on this item? I'll just make a comment, if I could, Can tell. Madam Mayor. Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for that, uh, Councillor Mason. Great work, and uh, I think it's a really important uh, initiative that you brought forward in the report. But what I'd just like to uh, highlight to uh, all the councillors, because I know they're all very concerned uh, about the costs of uh, all the various reports that um, come to council and that they're all fully, uh, fully uh, costed and that everyone's got their, their head right around it. So you'd be all very aware that uh, uh, by adopting this report, it will have uh, financial implications on us in the future that we've got no idea uh, of what they will yet be uh, and that the officers will need to bring those to us uh, in the future. But um, none, nonetheless, I, I assume it will get uh, adopted, but we don't know what the costs are. Councillor Cantell. Councillor Manane. Um, and um, just to congratulate the staff on a very comprehensive report. I don't think uh, any, any one of us would have known it was 12,000 items and certainly very few of us would have seen a lot of them. Um, interesting that this says the report says it was 10 years in the making. Um, that's the first time that all the works that have been put together and presented at the one time in the one report. So that's pretty historical in its own right. I note that in the recommendations, the desire to make the material more readily accessible to the public, and that clearly is a very fine aim. Um, I'd just like to propose that I really think for that to be the case, uh, there probably would need, need to be a, an emphasis on online education to, get, uh, to be able to display that many works and get them across our population. I think online is possibly the only way it's going to happen in any real sense of volume. And it would and it would be a great way to educate the the, the new the young in, in Geelong and the new to Geelong on our history. A public exhibition and public um, uh, obviously is uh, is something we could work at um, during our time. And I note that we've got a new head office, and I've note that we're going to revamp this building, um, and uh, which would which would give us some additional assistance. And even partnerships with the gallery for this building and partnerships for the purchaser of the new post office, if indeed that purchaser was related to the arts industry, uh, and Osborne House, are the sorts of opportunities I think we should look at to see that we, we could get as much of this uh, material out with clear access to the public. But I would encourage some good investigation into the online education because that might be a way that we could get exposure to the maximum amount of the public um, that uh, that I think we could e provide some really good education about the region's history. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Manane. Any other comments? Councillor Grisbeck. And I think, um, and as we have had a little bit more time on our hands recently, I've noticed that a lot of um, old photographs are popping up on social media around Geelong and all the different pages that are are there and it's actually a really interesting um, to see what things used to look like um, and I'd love to see how we could incorporate some of the uh, old collection of photographs somehow in our collection um, and I think it's really important that um, you know we adopt a no questions asked policy around, around the, the return of any items that might be um, once belonged to a council collection so um, Thank you to our community for those um, photographs that we've been looking at. It's been <laughs> quite distracting over the last few weeks, which is great. Thank you, Councillor Grisbeck. Councillor Nelson. It, sorry, Councillor Murray. It, okay. cer it certainly is um, <laughs> just going on on what um, Councillor Manane said. Uh, when I flicked through it um, after I got the papers um, or after they were distributed online, I looked up, I saw that Newtown and Chilwell badge, which I'm sorry if you're going to speak to uh. it, but... Um, I grew up in, um, in what was Chilwell, which probably doesn't exist anymore. It's called, called Newtown now. Um, but it's, it's, it's such a beautiful little emblem there. It's got two little 
um, uh, beehives, and I'd like to um, for the kids to do a, a project, maybe from Chilwell Primary, um, and find out what those two beehives are actually for. Um, I do know what the um, what the Latin says at the top. It says um, "God and my right" um, from 1858. But I'd like to know what the um, what the beehives mean. I'd really like to know. You represent hives. <laughs> but was Chilwell known for honey hives or beehives? Good question. Good question. Councillor Murray, do you want to answer that more fully? <laughs> Actually, I think that was raised um, when this came before us last time, that particular mm. topic, and I can't remember the answer to it. There you go. <laughs> Any project for you two guys? Yeah. To That's right. Did you want to have a few I, words? Look, I did, and I think I raised this last time um, when, it was back, when it was first before uh, the Chamber, but um, I raised that there was Alison Euphemia Grant Lip. Now, she left $500,000 to the Geelong Heritage Centre, and in... July 2010, and that was included in the 2013-14 budget in the building of the Geelong Heritage Centre. Now, um, there's been no acknowledgement, there's no official acknowledgement to this bequest from Alison, but um, I'd like to take this opportunity to raise it, I, I think I raised it last time, to perhaps have, look, maybe it's a plaque or some recognition of that contribution from uh, Alison Euphemia Grant Lip. Um, I think that should be done. I think it'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, Councillor Mason, to close? Thank you, Mayor Asher, and I thank uh, Councillor Contell for his comments. And of course, we do have to consider these recommendations in future budgets. And I do thank uh, Councillor Nelson and Murray for adding to the history and culture of our municipality, and to Councillor Grisbeck for reminding us that there is a no questions asked policy and there are some missing items hidden within our, within our municipality. And uh, there is a collection vision statement, Madam Mayor, and it reads, the city of Greater Geelong heritage collection reflects the histories, cultures and stories of the Geelong region. The collection will engage present and future <laughs> communities to understand where Geelong and its peoples have come from, so to influence our futures. Through its objects, artefacts and artworks, it tells stories of Geelong's place in the world and through innovative curating, it shows clever and creative pulse of the city. By setting the standards, the best standards of care and interpretation, it will build the capacity of the whole community in caring for and showcasing our heritage both locally and internationally. Madam Mayor, we're not quite there yet. This reports us, does alert us, that we must ensure care and public accessibility to world standards, that the collection should be holistically, and managed, holistically managed and resourced, and that it should reflect our, our multicultural and gender diversity. It links to council plans, initiatives and goals and it reminds us that there are few objects re representing the rich heritage of the First Nations people in this region, that there are few objects representing the region's cultural diversity and that there are insufficient resources committed to the sector. I commend the report. Beautifully timed too, Councillor Mason. Well done. Okay, on that note, I'll put the recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Item four, the Armstrong Creek Community Shed. I gather Councillor Harwood will move this one and Councillor Nelson will second. Thank you. Councillor Harwood. Thank you, Mayor Asher. Um, this is uh, one of the, the great, sort of, I guess, grassroots um, agendas that we're, uh, we're discussing this evening. Um, the Armstrong Creek Community Shed, um, we're looking to uh, endorse in principle um, this community shed being uh, developed down in um, Sovereign Drive in Mount Dunedin. And it's come out of, um, I guess, a preliminary planning work trying to find a new home for the Gravedale Men's Shed Group. Um, so we're looking now to potentially um, consolidate this uh, site um, down in Sovereign Drive and uh, where the Sports Recreation Centre has been set up and uh, is already uh, very active and uh, it's a, being... Uh, located as the, as the best potential site for the men's shed, but also the community garden um, to be co-locating co down there. Um, there's strong support from the community for, the, for this to occur. Uh, and the, pro the proposed site has the capacity to accommodate a range of groups, 
uh, but importantly, including the uh, Grovedale uh, Men's Shed Program, which has about 30 members and is one of about 14 in the region. Um, the, the Sporting Reserve site represents the, uh, the most appropriate viable option at this point, and um, that's why we're looking to give in principle support originally. I think um, it's important to note that um, the evidence tells us that the, uh, you know, the health and well-being and benefit of men's sheds and community gardens in our community is overwhelming. Um, the people that are able to get together, uh, particularly men who may be retired or um, on their own or similar, um, fantastic um, opportunity for them to get together, talk in their groups and, and, and do some good uh, community work. Often it's uh, around woodwork in particular, and they do some fantastic um, uh, work there that uh, the community benefits from. And obviously the, um, you know, the community connectedness, but the, the mental health consideration for them um, cannot be underestimated. And I'd just like to um, also say a, a quick thank you to um, Rory Costello from Villawood, who was one of the original uh, people to help with their original site for the Grovedale Men's Shed. They didn't have anywhere, um, and uh, Rory helped them get started. Um, then they, they moved on to um, Foundation 61 in Mount Denis, where Rob Litzy also helped them out where they're temporarily located. So it's a good news story. We have the, the, the potential to put them in a, in a, um, a home that or a home that they will um, basically be located in and also work with the um, uh, rest of the community, with the community uh, shed and the garden area, which would be a great win for the um, hugely expanding area of Armstrong Creek. Uh, that'll probably do for the moment. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Howard. Councillor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. Um, I guess this all started for me um, about three years ago when I met members of the um, Grovedale Men's Shed down at a pump room, as um, Councillor Howard alluded to, uh, in Armstrong Creek at Mount Denied there. Um, they were previously in an aeroplane hangar and this was their second home and they've since moved down to Foundation 61 and that, that itself, while, while good, um, poses its own problems. Um, members don't really want to join there because of, of what, the, what the facility is. Uh, it's a long way from, from public transport, so it's, it's a good place for Foundation 61, but not for a men's shed. So um, back in 2018, I managed to get some funding to find a place um, for these men uh, to, to build their things, what, whatever it is they build, and um, uh, letterboxes and things. Um, and we, 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 for a report to, to find a permanent base, and they, we went to a number of different places from um, the Grovedale Scouts, um, in behind Hayes Road and out at um, Russell's Road near the Pony Club there. Um, but, uh, the, re the report highlighted um, that uh, Mount Dunedin at, at Sovereign Drive there was the place. And it's a good place near the, near the school there, the secondary school, so um, that will be co-located with um, the Warralilla Community Garden Group. Um, at the moment they're out at um, Narana. Uh, got their seedlings out there and they're doing lots of work out there. I've been there a few times. Um, although they're a bit hesitant to move to Armstrong Creek, Creek when they're Warralilly, not Mount Denis, but you know, we'll, we'll sort that out, I'm sure. Um, so these co-located facilities are, are much needed, um, certainly now um, in the age of COVID-19 where men's health issues and mental health issues um, are really important. So this is a place where they can come uh, meet and talk about life in general. So it, it's a really good, really good thing and I really support it. Um, and I'm glad that they've now got a place that they can call home. Um, so now they can start applying for grants because until they actually have a base, they can't apply for grants. So um, thanks to all the incredible work that Merv's done and Trevor's done and Brenda and Megan. Um, great job, guys. And um, here we go. Thanks. Councillor Nelson. Councillor Manane. I'd just like to um, um, support the words of my fellow councillors in... in, in uh, establishment of this facility down at, at uh, Mount Denis, it's, uh, it's just further evidence that we're, we're actually building communities in these uh, vast uh, residential estates that we're developing and that's great to see. Um, and the co-location is, is a good plan. So uh, also I'd just like to take the opportunity to recognise the past support of Villawood and Foundation 61. Um, thank you for their uh, their support of the of the Gravedale Men's Shed organisation and uh, during the transition period, and we look forward to have them in their new home. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Manane. Any other comments, Councillor Mansfield and Councillor Cantell? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Councillors uh, Nelson and Harwood for their work on this. Um, I think it's you know it's great when you see something that someone's been passionate about and working with the community on come to fruition or get closer to coming to fruition. Um, so um, 
so well done and, and, and thank you for, for your work on that. I'd just like to comment that um, someone got in touch with us during the week. I was trying to find the email before, but um, they pointed out that currently we're all uh, experiencing social isolation and social distancing. And for many members of our community, unfortunately, that's something that they already lived with pre-COVID and uh, spaces uh, like men's sheds are really, really important um, for, for you know, many members of our community. These kinds of places where people can get together are a, a mechanism for them to escape that social isolation. Um, and I, I'm really hopeful that we'll get back to a time when you know, we can, we can um, reopen those facilities. But at the moment, I guess it's an opportunity for us all to develop some empathy for people who are you know, who, who live in a, in a much more isolated state, um, uh, you know, in, in lives. Um, so I, I really strongly endorse this motion that's been put before us. Thank you, Councillor Mansfield. Councillor can tell. Yeah, I think uh, Councillor uh, Mansfield uh, wrapped it up perfectly, actually. Um, it's, um, it's a credit to you guys, first of all, for uh, continuing to pursue this. But we have a number of uh, men's sheds around the municipality. Uh, you know, diverse to have one on their uh, property there as well. Um, and they do uh, a lot with uh, the female gender as well in, in various areas. Uh, we had one there at uh, the, the yard there behind the Osborne House there for a period of time as well. And they are just great, um, great opportunities for people to get together. It really doesn't matter what you build, uh, Councillor Nelson. It's about chewing the fat. And uh, you know, I've got great pride today uh, and relief. I was in my garage all day uh, trying to tidy it up and uh, being a, of a family with um, a four beautiful uh, great women uh, and uh, two female dogs, I could just hear the ruckus that was occurring in my house and uh, I couldn't have been more pleased than to be in my garage uh, tidying it up. So uh, great, great opportunity for guys to get together and, and just talk. So uh, well done to you guys. Thank you, Councillor Cantell. Any other comments? Councillor Howard to close. I think it's almost refreshing to be talking about um, you know, community grassroots uh, infrastructure, which is kind of good. So um, you've got the vibe, so um, we'll put it to the recommendation. <laughs> well wrapped up, Councillor Howard. Okay, on that note, put the recommendation to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Well done. Okay, item five, the 2020 Christmas program to be moved by Councillor Cantell, seconded Councillor Aitken. An alternate recommendation for uh, this report. Thank you, Councillor uh, Madam Mayor. Great. To second the alternate, Councillor Aitken. Yes, okay, Councillor Cantell. Go ahead. Thanks, uh, Madam Mayor. I'm not uh, going to spend a lot of time. Count, uh, Mayor Asher, I'm sorry, I'm not sure of the protocols. If you could give me some advice, please. I do have an amendment to Councillor Contell's. Amendment uh, to the alternate. Yeah, alternate. Talk to the alternate first. Okay, so Eddie to speak, Councillor Aitken to speak, and at some point Councillor Mason can put his amendment forward. Okay. okay. Councillor can tell. Yeah, look, I'll stick with the I'll stick with my original original intent, which was not to really speak to this too much. Um, only that um, I guess it was a little uh, little unfair with some of the um, coverage that this report uh, received tonight because um, as a council we'll continue to receive reports from officers. Um, you know, tonight we saw um, the, our heritage, our collections report, the, we've got the draft Geelong Town Hall conservation management plan, we've got the external membership to the potato shed. Many could ask why would we be talking about those kinds of things in, in such a, uh, an environment that we're in at the moment which is the pandemic. Uh, maybe many could probably say that the only thing we perhaps should have talked about today was the support packages. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, uh, as many would know, and those that were quoted in some of the media outlets today should have known, and if they don't, they should uh, educate themselves in the process, is that once we have a report in train that officers have actually presented to us, we only have a couple of options. One is to actually hear it on the night, uh, debate it, or we defer it. Uh, this particular report, in fact, we pulled it uh, several weeks ago already because we understand uh, the environment that we're in. And, and as such, it was presented again by officers. And so until we do something with 
this report or any other report that may come in the future, and some of them people will be asking, why are we talking about? Well, it's, it's a matter of council business. In fact, the employees of this establishment, which we've talked about uh, so much today and previously, this is the work that they actually do. And so, as such, uh, the alternate recommendation that I wanted to put forward tonight was that we really just note the report rather than adopt the report. Um, being sympathetic uh, and, uh, and acknowledging the environment that we're in and ask the CEO to bring the report back to us for consideration next year in February. Um, acknowledge that, uh, you know, should things um, um, become somewhat normal again towards the end of the year and we actually have uh, a Christmas program to consider, that we accept that. Um, and also uh, note the, the figures that the officers had put forward uh, in regards to the numbers that uh, were generated in uh, the program last year. So really this, what this is doing is saying we'll put it away, we'll come back to it in the new year and uh, consider it then. So I'm not going to go into any of the uh, suggestions, uh, the proposal itself. It's really to say let's put it on ice Noted. until next year and look at it then. Understood. Thanks, Councillor Contell. Councillor Aitken. Yeah, look, I'll be very economical. Look, the report does deserve to be deferred until a future time for consideration. Um, February 2020 is appropriate. The fact is COVID-19 um, um, is the most important issue we're focusing at the present time. The alternative recommendation that Councillor Contell actually circulated on the weekend I, I must point out it was it was actually before um, so that some recent publicity this issue actually got um, uh, was um, sympathetic to the environment that we actually are um, experiencing at the present time and um, and also highlights as well too that this year Christmas may have even more significance for the Geelong community because it'll be the first time that we're actually able to maybe have um, less um, social isolation restrictions on us and um, it is important to also have hope for our community as well too in the future so um, I, um, I strongly support deferring it let's have a debate about it at the future I'm not even convinced I'm going to support some of the recommendations that are put in the plan but now's not the time to be discussing it and it shouldn't be and um, I wholeheartedly um, support the recommendation that Councillor Contell's put before us. Thank you Councillor Aitken. Any other comments before Jim moves his amendment, Councillor Nelson? Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I wasn't going to speak either until I saw in the paper. Um, was it today or yesterday? I don't, don't, don't know. Um, um, as we all know, we're, we're, we're just so busy here um, with things coming up, reports coming up, and um, with COVID-19, everything is changing so quickly. So it's, it's good to, to defer it because I didn't want to be spending... Um, two million dollars on on Christmas in 2020 because you know there's so much, so many other worthwhile things to spend money on such as our staff um, and everyone knows that the state and federal MPs know that um, so it was pretty disappointing to see that um, a federal MP is trying to score political points when we're all here trying to work together you know I was very disappointed so um, as a gesture of good faith hopefully he'll um, put a share of his of his uh, 350 thousand dollar plus wage. Um, to those affected by the COVID crisis. Let's, let's put it to him and see if he does that. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor Nelson. And just from my point of view, given that the uh, criticism was directed at me, um, I'd also support noting this report and deferring full consideration of the program to February 2021. It's clearly the most appropriate response to this particular item. And I'll also reiterate my request to the CEO and ELT to revise the forward agenda and put a very strong COVID lens on everything brought to Council for the next two or three months. Are there any other comments on this particular item? So we vote on this one and then we know. So, okay, Jim, Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mayor Asher. I also wholeheartedly uh, support um, the intent of Councillor Contell. Uh, perhaps I don't understand some of it, but um, clearly um, I do hope that we are all um, dancing in the streets at the end of this year and, uh, and um, uh, that some of, some of the terrible things that are happening at the moment with COVID-19 are already in the past. But it's unlikely that this will be the case. 
it's more likely that we'll still be experiencing social distancing, uh, physical distancing, etc. And I think that uh, it is really appropriate, as Councillor Contell's recommended, to put everything off until next year. So I fail to understand uh, why in 11.3 we're including an extra $50,000. And so my amendment, my amendment is to exclude, is to delete uh, the second sentence in 11.3, to delete with the inclusion of $50,000 for the community Christmas project within this program. And I think that that $50,000, instead of having a creative director or extra $50,000 going into a Christmas program, I think we should stay with a modest Christmas program at the end of this year and apply any extra funding we might have towards the vulnerable, the homeless, the hungry uh, and the disenfranchised. We go to Councillor Raitkin to answer that one, <laughs> to respond to that. Do you have indeed. a seconder for his amendment? Oh, do you have a seconder for your amendment, Councillor Mason? Okay. Councillor Howard. Sure. Did you want to speak to it at this point, Councillor Howard? Okay, Councillor Raitkin, I think you'll want to um, talk look, to Look, I that. want to speak against the amendment. Um, I, I actually think Councillor um, Mason's actually confused. The, mm -hmm. the Community Christmas Project is actually the project to enable... Um, citizens of our northern suburbs and citizens of um, St Albans and Whittington to actually participate in the um, Geelong Christmas um, City project. Um, um, so I'm actually confused by Councillor Mason's um, amendment, which is essentially saying he doesn't support the council actually working um, with the northern suburbs and the community in St Albans and Whittington, enabling them to participate in the um, city's Christmas um, program and project. So I hope it's just that Councillor um, Mason doesn't understand what um, it actually means, and I'll give him the benefit of doubt of that because... Councillor Mason is one of the champions on the council with myself in supporting the underprivileged for fighting for disadvantage and actually being a strong voice for those people, uh, members in the community who are vulnerable. This actually recommendation is about giving them the opportunity to participate in the um, um, city's Christmas um, project and program and I would be mortified that Councillor Mason was identified as the person who has actually stopped that from actually occurring. We had a very successful Christmas in the North um, project um, uh, last financial year and um, the intention was that we expanded it to include Whittington and St Albans, which is another significantly disadvantaged part of um, Geelong. And this was actually, um, recommendation was actually embracing those uh, expansion of that program. Instead of it being the Christmas in the North program, it was actually the Community Christmas Project. Um, so I hope Councillor um, Mansfield just understands that it's actually not what he's um, already referred to and I encourage him to withdraw his um, amendment because um, it really is not within the traditional spirit of which Councillor Manson is usually the second person su um, supporting me on these type of issues. Just to clarify, it's essentially rolling in the existing Christmas in the North program into this one, under the one brand, essentially. There's, there's no additional expenditure, correct? This is not replacing the Christmas in the North because that's been dissolved. This is actually an expansion of that program um, to embrace St Albans and Winnington, yep. and it does need fifty thousand dollars for it because there's no money to actually do the Christmas, mm -hmm. um, the community Christmas project, um, okay. and that's why there's the covered on the recommendation that actually also says that ultimately it's subject to any um, restrictions associated with COVID um, nineteen. So um, I actually think it's a very well thought out um, um, opportunity to actually embrace those members of our community that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have missed out in the Christmas in the CBD um, project, yeah. Does that clarify for you, Councillor Mason? It does clarify. It, um, Madam Mayor, uh, I wish it had been um, as well expressed as it was thought out. And uh, if um, uh, now that it's clarified and there, there is a benefit for those vulnerable people in the north and the south and perhaps even in the east, as I do remember some of the discussions earlier on now, uh, I do uh, withdraw my amendment in that case. Great. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Grisbeck. 
Uh, thank you. I'd just like to speak on that um, amended motion. Um, I think I appreciate that some members of the community have contacted me personally about um, and said that the council should be considering long-term aspects of our Christmas program and how to enhance it. And I've also hear the view that, um, of which I share, that this is not necessarily the time to be contemplating um, this type of report. Um, in saying that, I would recommend the 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 Councillor Contell's motion because it actually says that we'll contemplate it at a, at a further time in the future. Um, the CEO and the executive have agreed that during this crisis, as the Mayor has said, that where possible we'll continue the work of Council if we can. Saying this though, I guess as councillors we get given the reports to consider. Um, unfortunately in this situation the media has sold it to the community that we've got five million dollars in our back pocket to be spending right now. Um, it is a duty that we have to our employees and our community and our residents that um, we don't have that money in our back pocket right now. And if we did, um, there would be spent on the community package that we passed earlier. Um, the report did have a deadline to be brought back to council pre-COVID. I think we asked for it early January to come back at this time. So the organisation was doing what it was asked to do, but the timing just wasn't great. Um, and as you'll see, the previous support agent, we're here for the community. We're here for the employees and we'll do everything we can to get the community back on track post this COVID um, pandemic. So um, I will support this um, recommendation and I think the same as Councillor Aiken, not necessarily agreeing with what's in the report at this point. That should come back before us at a future time. But just to say that, that we will um, note it and then re-debate it at a time that's appropriate. Thank you, Councillor Grisbeck. Any other comments? Councillor Mansfield. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, um, I, I, I support deferring, you know, um, deferring the, discuss the substantive discussion of this report uh, to a later time. I think that's appropriate. I, I think it just highlights that we do need to be very mindful of what, um, uh, what we're putting out into the public and how we communicate that um, going forward. Um, we're in the process of preparing our uh, budget at the moment and I think that is going to be, in it's incredibly important that, um, that the, the way we work through that and how we communicate that to the public um, at this time is really carefully considered. Um, I completely appreciate that we need to continue with the business of, of council, but there is a fine balance there. And um, I think that's something that um, as, a, as a council group and as an organisation, um, we need to manage as, as carefully as we can going forward because the community is, as uh, Councillor Howard pointed out earlier, watching us. Um, at the same time, we're all trying to do our best to continue um, keeping people you know, keep, keeping the business of council moving, keeping people employed um, and, and supporting our community as best we can. So, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a challenging time, but we do need to be mindful of um, the, the, the there's, a, there's a lot of sensitivity in the community at the moment, and quite rightly, because it is such a difficult time for so many people um, that, you know, what, what we're putting out there in the public domain does need to be really... Councillor Mansfield, Councillor Harwood. Madam Mayor, um, I support the recommendation and I think it again demonstrates that um, you know, this council is um, very, very sensitive and conscious of the current scenario that's facing our community. We're a part of that and we're feeling it as well. Um, I'm sure we've got family and friends, etc., cetera, um, who are adversely affected. I've no doubt about that. Um, I think it's important to, um, you know, again, let the community know that, um, that we are um, feeling the same pain in, in, in many and different ways. Um, I think in relation to 11.3, um, um, thank you for the explanation, uh, Councillor Aiken. I think the fact that um, you know, $50,000 is a lot of money, but I think it's very modest in the context. And I think if it's at, at that point in time, uh, when we get to Christmas and uh, whatever the, um, the world looks like then, um, I think we've got to give some sort of confidence that um, you know, we're still going to be taking small wins, still giving um, to the community where we can, uh, be it in small amounts but, um, and, in, and in calculated um, measures, um, I think we still have to, as we said, keep, on, keep doing the business of council, keep um, responding to the community, still engaging with the community and still uh, meeting what needs we can deliver. And I think that's critical. And I think the extension out to the, to the east, to the Whittington, St Albans area um, is a win. Um, so I, I fully support the recommendation and again, um, 
most people, most people know I don't do um, a lot of social media, but it was drawn to my attention on, um, on f uh, Facebook. Um, some of the commentary around uh, our supposed attitude to this, and I just found it astounding, some of the comments um, that were being made, and I just, I, I guess that's why I don't do social media that well. <laughs> it just, some it things just are best it not blew read me away, well. some, of the, some of the knucklehead comments that came in. Honestly, people out Love there, please have a think about next time you hit that keyboard. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Howard. <laughs> I am conscious of time. We've got 17 minutes left. Has anybody got any further comments on this one? No, Councillor Contell to close. Yes, very quickly. Thanks to, to everyone. I, um, I do take on board uh, Councillor Mansfield's comments that the, the, the challenge is no matter, no matter how we communicate it, uh, certain outlets will put it out in a manner to get the uh, reaction uh, that they desire. And unfortunately, that will happen again tomorrow. And, and it will happen again next week, despite uh, uh, and notwithstanding the fact that what we're trying to do here is actually uh, something sympathetic and, and genuine in our intent, uh, and that will be the case with other reports uh, that come forward. So uh, with that, uh, I'll, I'll leave it to others uh, how they vote. Thank you, Councillor Contell. So all those in favour of Councillor Contell's amendment? Those against? Carried. Well done. Thanks, Councillor Contell. Item six, the draft Geelong Town Hall Conservation Management Plan. Moved Councillor Sullivan, seconded Councillor Murray. Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the purpose of what we have here before us is to seek council endorsement to release the Geelong Town Hall Conservation Management Plan 2020 for community consultation for a period of time of no less than eight weeks. Now, back in September 2018, council resolved in relation to this matter that the future use of the City Hall should, subject to sufficient government funding being available, include the extension of the Geelong Art Gallery and part of City Hall be retained for civic meetings and ceremonial functions. In order to ensure the heritage values of City Hall are conserved in any future use and development options, GJM Heritage Consultants were commissioned by Council to prepare, to prepare a Conservation Management Plan, or a CMP. The draft of this plan is what we have before us this evening. Now, once the new civic accommodation building is operational in 2022, most city staff will move there, leaving large parts of City Hall available for new use. The CMP will provide guidance to Council in its consideration for future use. As a place entered on the Victorian Heritage Register, Council needs to ensure that any alterations or additions required to accommodate a new use of all or part of City Hall do not have a detrimental effect on the heritage significance of this place. The CMP has identified that, the most, that most of the heritage values with City Hall lie in its exterior architecture and some small remnants of the early interior, which leaves a scope to modify some interior and some small scope of the exterior, um, mostly the modern parts closer to the Geelong Art Gallery. Now, as we all know, this historic building is the longest continuing seat of local government in the state of Victoria, and it is of great importance to our city. Our duty is to ensure that as we grow, change and improve as a city, that we do not lose sight or respect of our past. I would like to thank Councillor Mason for his dedication to this document and to the Heritage Advisory Committee for the hard work in getting it to its final perfect stage, I'll say, and uh, happy to move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Councillor Murray. Oh, I think uh, notes I made, uh, Councillor Sullivan pretty much summed them all up, but um, just, to, just to clarify and, and identify more is that uh, the CMP has identified uh, that most of the heritage values of City Hall lie in its exterior architecture, as uh, Councillor Sullivan has said, and only sm small remnants of the uh, early interior. So it leaves a substantial scope uh, to modify the interior and also scope for exterior changes, um, which is great news for the Geelong Art Gallery. But um, the report is a history lesson. If you re read the whole report, um, and as Councillor Kylie said, there's some also some good photos in here too, Kylie. But um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that stood out to me in, in reading this report. 
and that the first attempt to provide local government occurred in 1843 with the establishment of the District Council of Grant. The area under the District Council's jurisdiction stretched from the Werribee River to the east, Hopkins River to the west, Bass Strait to the south and Meriburra to the north. Fair area. And uh, so it was no wonder the council failed, Councillor Alley. <laughs> but they did have a legacy, and it's Market Square. The original uh, persuaded the government to reserve that area, and it's still Market Square as it is today. Um, so the, the overall objective, as uh, Councillor Sullivan has said, um, is to ma maintain the cultural heritage significance of the building and its setting, maintain and conserve the original and early building fabric, and, amongst other things, enhance the presentation of the building and its physical condition. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time for what can be achieved here. And uh, this conservation uh, management plan is there to guide whatever occurs. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Murray. Very inspiring. Any other comments on this one? Councillor Mason. Uh, very quickly, I'm conscious of the time, but uh, and I do thank Councillor Sullivan for his kind words. And I'd especially like to, to pass them on as chair of the Heritage Advisory Committee to Mrs Jennifer Banto, OAM, Dr David Rowe and Mark Beasley. And they've all put in a great deal to this report. And yes, Councillor uh, Murray, it does make very interesting reading and it does explain in detail reads Renaissance revival style rectangular structure with a barable style uh, Barable stone exterior. So, um, all in all, the CMP strongly recommends retention of some municipal function, as was the earlier expressed desire of this council, and that public accessibility is retained within the building, particularly in the highly intact 1917 ground floor rooms. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Any other comments? Councillor Sullivan to close. Um, nothing further to add. I put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Item 7, external membership potato shed moved. Councillor Sullivan, seconded Councillor Murray. Um, before us this evening, or right now, is the uh, seat council's approval for community membership positions to the potato shed committee of management. Um, now we're all familiar with the Ballerine multi arts facility. What a fantastic job they do. What a fantastic job the people inside it do. Now, this facility is overseen by a committee of management, which I have the pleasure of serving as chair for. This committee is a special committee of council under section 86 of the Local Government Act. It consists of two council appointees, two representatives from the Bellarine Secondary College, two representatives from St Ignatius College, and two community representatives. After seeking public expressions of interest to fill the two community represent representative positions, a selection process was conducted and two nominees are recommended before us. Um, so with that, I would like to move the recommendation. The Council endorse the appointment of Miss Emma Watson and Mr Christopher Reynolds as the community representatives to the Bellarine Multi Arts Facility Committee of Management in accordance with the terms and conditions of the Joint Development and Use Agreement. I would also like to move that Council thank Miss Anne Brackley, OAM, and Dr Helen Nicholas for their commitment to the potato shed over the last two years, and indeed for much longer than that. Both Ms Brackley and Dr Nicholas have been incredibly committed committee members and contributed greatly to the potato shed. Ms Watson and Mr Reynolds have great shoes to fill, but I'm sure they are up to the task. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Councillor Murray. Uh, no, Councillor Sullivan said it all, except that uh, there was actually, I think, five, five or six uh, nominations for the two positions. Yeah, six, yeah. So we had to vote, and uh, it was extremely difficult, actually, yeah, to, because uh, the very qualified uh, applicants mm. for the position. So, yes, yeah, so I'm very confident with the two that are appointed. Well done. Any other comments on this one? Councillor Mason. Once again, very briefly, I'd like to endorse everything that uh, my colleagues have said, but in particular, I had worked with uh, Ms Anne Brackley, OAM, and Dr Helen Nicholas over the last two years, and it was a pleasure to work with them. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Sullivan to close. Nothing further to add. Okay, we'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Final item is planning authorisations. Council to staff moved Councillor Sullivan, seconded Councillor Mason. Councillor Sullivan. 
Um, thank you. This is a bit of business as usual. Uh, we have a new town planner, Sophie Williams, and I'm happy to move a planning authorisation to her. Thank you, Councillor Sullivan. Councillor Mason. Welcome to Sophie Williams. Lovely. Thank you. Anyone want to make any comment on these? Go back to Councillor Sullivan. <laughs> Great. We'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Okay, we move into the Notice of Motion, Section C, Councillor Aitken, COVID-19, City of Greater Geelong Grants Program, 2020 to 2021, and second round, 2019 to 20, moved. Councillor Aitken, seconded Councillor Grisbeck. Councillor Aitken. Um, thank you, Mayor Asher. Look, this is another COVID-19 response that the council is actually making. Um, and um, Look, we've got limited financial arsenal to be able to fight um, for the community to survive against COVID-19 and also to recover against um, COVID-19. In fact, that's why local government in Australia, and, and including Geelong, is actually advocating for state and federal government um, support um, to be able to um, fight um, against COVID-19. Um, one of the things we do have as council, we have a um, grants program which has a value of about $4.6 million. It was scheduled to actually start on the 27th of April. And um, look, the most prudent thing is actually what's recommended in the notice of motion tonight, and that is that we should defer um, that um, grant program and actually um, give us the capacity to consider um, at a future date when we've actually got more information and more understanding what um, value we can get for that $4.9 million. It may mean that we continue the existing grant programs in the future for 2021, or it could actually mean we um, develop some targeted um, COVID-19 recovery action program grants. And um, that is actually the prudent thing that council um, needs to do in terms of um, this particular responsibility and give us um, some additional funding to be able to address um, COVID-19. The other component that we do have as well too is there was some um, second round grants associated with our current um, financial year grants programs. They were scheduled to come before council and make a recommendation. A lot of those, my understanding, are now being challenged that they possibly can't actually be um, delivered. And um, it is prudent that we actually, um, the officers, be given the opportunity to review those and then bring a further report um, back to council to talk specifically about those um, particular initiatives. Um, I um, think that the notice of motion is quite um, um, uh, succinct in what we're trying to achieve here and reflects another COVID-19 response of this council in a very professional and productive manner. Thank you, Councillor Aitken. Councillor Grisbeck. I'll just reserve at this point. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Okay, any other comments on this notice of motion? Councillor Manane. Um, yeah, I'll just, just a point uh, that might be an amendment, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be my amendment, it could be Councillor Aitken's. I, I just, uh, and I'm just trying to get it up on my screen. It, part of the motion talks about the Indigenous program, um, and I just wonder whether what is meant by it. We talk about suspending the 2020 and 2021 grant program for review as part of the community and economic support package, and that's, that's fine. Should we be adding the words at, at number three uh, and develop guidelines and, uh, and council's consideration, allocation of grants during that, uh, as part of the community and economic support package in response to? I would accept it, but it actually changed the intent. I made the statement during my opening to the motion that we actually could continue these grants under the existing framework in 2021. If we actually adopt what Councillor Manane is actually presenting before the Council tonight, it's actually saying that the money, the grants will actually only be used for COVID-19. I actually want to keep it open that there's flexibility mm -hmm. um, and because our grant programs that we have, are, and I think Councillor Manane's a regular um, submitter to our grant programs, they're actually very well received in the community and and um, as a consequence, I won't accept the um, recommended amendment. I, I, I must be misreading it because item one says suspend the 2020 and 22 grant program. So, uh, so are we looking to suspend all other grant all programs reviews. and actually just one, just have one grant program from the year, which is the traditional owners one? That's the way I'm reading. Am I reading that incorrectly? them for review, I think, are the critical words. Councillor Aitken, can you answer the question? 
I'm conscious we're going to run out of time, yeah. Mayor Asher, and to pay semantics on the words now, and it could have actually been raised. I know some motion's actually been out for quite a few days. It could have actually been um, discussed. Um, so I'm conscious that we've got... Fair into, point. Yeah. Yep, we've got five minutes. Well, I'd like to pass um, 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 an amendment to add the words as part of a community and economic support package in response to COVID-19. Councillor Grisbeck's seconding, so Councillor Grisbeck's to speak first before the amendment can go through, Councillor Manane, so. Uh, okay, so I think, so I support the amendment, obviously, seconding it. Um, I think what I read this to be, um, Councillor Manane, is that, that number three is to continue the work to establish the grants fund in collaboration with the traditional owners um, and for council's consideration and allocation of grants so it's to develop the guidelines for council's consideration and allocation of grants during the 2021 financial year so um, i wouldn't see that it would be uh, to award any grants in that particular uh, fund until we look at the the fund granting round as a whole. So um, I think that this is a, a good outcome at the moment for the community to um, ensure that we, we're not necessarily giving out grants that we can't deliver on right now, given the current situation. I think it, it's hard to always say to the community that we can't, that we're going to suspend a grant program, um, but I think in the current climate it's the right call to make. So that's uh, where I'm at. Thank you, Councillor Grisbeck. Councillor Murray. <laughs> Look, I, I, I might be seeing this completely different, and I think I am, because I think um, we shouldn't support this motion tonight. I think we should be perhaps even increasing our community grants program. Um, well, there's been a lot, of, a lot of said tonight about different things, about the COVID-19, and here we have an opportunity to really say to the community, look, things have changed, but in the second half of this year and the first half of next year, the community events that, that you've applied funding for will proceed and, and even add some more to it. I can't see why, and I'm, I'm under pressure because we're on a time limit, mm. is that correct? Yep. Yes, that, um, You're talking about hope, and you're talking about Christmas, it's important, the good outcome for the community. This isn't a good outcome from the community. They'll be expecting their events. The events that we're perhaps talking about um, that ran last year, Lara Food and Wine Festival, do we proceed with that? We, we don't. this year. No, no. So this is this is what I'm saying. Those are the events that we should be be proceeding with. But if this goes ahead, we won't be. It's for I'm not argue. And word for word, <laughs> Nightjar Festival, the Mardi Gras Street Festival in Little Mallet Street um, ran out of Pete's Pistol that was funded through through this community grants. It's not going to be there for them. Yet it should be. It should be, and should be on more, so that we can then the community sees and that we. we you know, the wheel starts turning again and, and we're helping it. By abolishing this, we're not. Thanks, Councillor Murray. Councillor Mansfield, do you look like you want to speak? Very briefly, um, Madam Mayor. Look, I, I'll actually support this motion. I think we, we still have the op option to reopen the grant program um, if we want to. Um, so we're not... Um, the way I, I've read this and understood it is that we can still um, have a grants program, uh, but we're just giving ourselves a bit of leeway um, in case we, you know it isn't possible to have a lot of these events and, and undertake a lot of and, and it's really difficult for a lot of organisations to even apply at the moment. So with the amount of uncertainty, I think this gives us um, some financial flexibility, um, some more options for supporting the community. But it also, I, I'm, I was worried about that as well, Councillor Murray, about it st preventing us from having these events, but I don't think it does. Um, we have the option to reopen the grants program um, as it is if we want to, but we're just providing ourselves with a bit of flexibility um, financially. Thanks, Councillor Mansfield. That's certainly the way I'm reading it too. We're just putting a COVID lens on the, the community grants at the moment. Have a look at it. Anyone else want to comment? We've got approximately 30 seconds each if you'd like to make another comment. Yeah. Councillor Aitken to close. Yeah, nothing further to add. Yeah, sure. Do you still want to move your amendment, Pat? Uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I, want, I want to add the words as part of a community and economic support package in response to COVID-19 to the wording of, of number three, so that so it is consistent with all other grant programs. Is there a seconder for the amendment? Mason, Councillor Mason, thank you.
Okay. Is that right, Pat? Given that we have debated, and I think everybody understands, we can put Pat's amendment to the vote. Do we? Okay, I thought you'd already spoken to it before. Oh, I'm happy not to speak any further. Yeah, I think, I think we all understand what the situation is. Okay, so we put Pat's amendment to the vote. So all those in favour for Pat's amendment? Okay, those against? Okay, so the amendment didn't go, so we go back to the original notice of motion, put that to the vote. All those in favour of the original notice of motion? Thank you. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Division? Those four? At a time. <laughs> uh, Manane, Nelson, Harwood, Sullivan, Mason, Grisbeck, Asher, Cantell, Mansfield, Aitken? Against? Murray. Thank you. Meeting closed. Nine.